we have not completely discussed ideal filter characteristics so we will continue from that particular point we have actually seen types of filter and their ideal representation in frequency domain right so what we have seen that they have a sharp transition from stop band to pass band right so i'll just plot a low pass filter so that we can clearly see what we want to see So this is H of omega mod only magnitude and then it goes with omega from pi to minus pi. Okay. <coughs> so for a low pass filter it will allow this frequency band to be passed from minus of omega C to omega c this frequency band is allowed to be passed and remaining all other frequencies are discriminated and that not allowed to pass through the filter so this particular portion is called pass band this portion with red And this portion of frequency which is stopped is called stop band. Now one can see that ideal filter. have constant gain over the pass band and usually it is unity second Ideal filter has zero gain over the stop band, right? And third is ideal filter have linear phase response. We will see this particular part in much detail right after some time. So right now we knew this ideal filter have three important properties. First, first ideal filter have a constant gain over a pass band, and usually it is unity. Usually it is unity one and Second is over a stop band region, ideal band have zero gain, and also an ideal filter have linear phase response. Now we'll see this particular part in detail. Now let's assume. A signal xn with frequency components from minus omega c to omega c is passed 
through a bit. So how this system looks? So we have a printer like this and we will provide input xn and then we will have output yn and the frequency response of this particular system is h of omega now this h of omega is given h of omega is given as h omega equals to c exponential minus j omega n naught which is defined from omega c minus of omega c omega to omega c and which is equal to a zero otherwise this is how this transfer function of the filter is defined then by definition we know pi n which Fourier transform is pi omega then y omega is equal to h omega into x of omega and if you substitute the values so it can be written as c x omega exponential minus j omega and 0 for minus omega c omega to omega c 0 otherwise okay now we know x omega we have xn and its Fourier transform is x of omega let's get Fourier transform so x omega is equal to summation n equals to minus infinity to infinity xn exponential minus j of omega right one can find out this particular relation from the jet transform which we have already discussed and then x of n is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi x of omega exponential j omega these are the discrete Fourier transform and its discrete time Fourier transform and its inverse of discrete time Fourier transform this solution is we get from there and we have also find out this particular relation using Z transform previously now similarly y n can be written in terms of 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi y of omega exponential j omega then we can substitute the value of y omega so after substituting value of y omega yn will be equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi c x of omega exponential j omega right minus and not and exponential j omega and this yn can be written as c over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of omega exponential j omega n minus n naught now comparing this relation 
comparing this relation with xn equals to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to pi x of omega exponential g omega n we get y n equals to c x of n minus n right now this relation is important why it is why it is important because y n is the output and x n minus x zero is came from input so this relation directly provides an input output right so one can see the output sequence y n is a scaled version by c and shifted version by n naught of the input sequence okay so this part is an important point okay so just do it again okay so y n is a scaled version by c and shifted version by n naught of the input sequence x of n now this sequence y n we have obtained after passing through a filter h of right so we can write y omega as mod of y omega that is magnitude of y omega and exponential j theta omega now comparing with y omega is equal to c x of omega exponential minus j omega n zero we get theta omega is equal to minus of omega n zero. Now this n zero is a delay and a pure delay is acceptable for the filter for the filter as it will occur for all frequencies frequencies linearly right similarly amplitude is clearing is also not a distortion as it is independent of frequency
then if we differentiate a phase if we differentiate the phase of the output signal so we get del theta omega over d omega with a negative sign will be equal to theta and this is called tau g omega and it gives pure d now this particular term tau g omega is also called envelope delay or group delay of the filter now what this tau g omega gives tau g omega is the time delay of the signal component as it goes through the filter filter that is tau g omega is property of a filter next is as theta of omega is linear then only tau g omega will be constant and that means all the frequency components will go through a, a constant delay and that is not at all a distortion if this theta omega is not linear in nature then this tau g omega will not be constant and then it will vary according to the frequencies and then all the frequency components will not go through a constant delay and that may produce a distortion and after this we'll discuss another impact of ideal filter in next lecture thank you